Joshua Peterson with Peterson Electric here today. I want to talk to you about grounding electroconductors. When you do a service change on your house, which basically is your electrical panel with all your switches, you have to take that panel off and put on a new one. When you do that, the city requires, as well as the National Electric Code of 2014, Article 250.64 talks about grounding electroconductor sizing. And when you size it, you have to do it based upon how many, what your wire size is outside. So for example, if we do a number 100 amp panel in this house, and we're doing basically a number one, a number one aluminum, or a number two aluminum, or a number two aluminum, or a number one copper, you're basically going to want to size it as a number six, as a bare or a stranded copper conductor. The code states that when you bring it into the home, where the, the water comes into the home through the cement from the city or your well, you're going to be trying to bond that within five foot to the entrance. This is a nice example because most of the time this water valve is at another side of where the hot water heater is or the hot water heater is upstairs. A lot of older homes have hot, the, the bonding right here in the cold or the hot of hot water heater. They'll have it by the washer machine or even underneath the kitchen sink when they did that back in the 70s and 80s. No longer are we allowed to do that. So when we change out a panel, they want to make sure that that panel is bonded to the earth. That's why we do that. And when you bond it, you're going to bond it to this cold water shutoff valve. If there's a meter, you'll have to jumper it and bond it as well. The code states that that wire has to be continuous and is treated as a, a, uh, a conductor that is actually part of the grounding system now for the service. They also talk about a UFERD, which is going to be in Article 250.52. They're also talking about two ground rods in Article 250.52 being eight foot apart, driving them eight foot deep or putting them horizontal in a trench. And when you do that, what you're trying to do, guys, is you're trying to pick up a ground either through the cold water, also through Euford in the cement with a rebar, or possibly just outside with your two ground rods. This is important if you get hit by lightning. Let's say that one service call, I actually had a drunk driver hit a transformer and knocked it off of its pad. And that shunted an, what we call an AIC fault current back to the home from that transformer. And when that shunted backwards, thank God that that home was 300 foot away, otherwise it would have blown up that meter on the side of the home. But because of that resistance there of the distance, as well as the fact they had the right breakers in series of how the breakers are supposed to be made, whether it's a 10,000 AIC fault current, a 24, a 32, or just a 22. Um, basically, what we're trying to protect is lightning strikes, faults on transformers. And if they fault backwards, they don't come back into this home and, and, and start a fire. This ground will actually pick up very well going back outside to the earth. Thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll see you next week.